Can you hear me now? Good. Do you remember that? From 2002 to 2011, Verizon Wireless aired commercials which showed a test caller calling from all over the place to check for service. It was brilliant because now, over 20 years later, when a call gets glitchy, what do we say? Can you hear me now? No one likes to drop a call. We have things to say and words to hear. Listening matters. A friend of mine recently shared these words of wisdom on listening. Listen to understand, not to respond. Let that soak in. Listening to really understand requires silence on our part, not a quick response. Words are powerful. They reveal so often the depths of our heart and emotions. Sometimes words spoken reveal beauty and depth of wisdom and character, while other words reveal immaturity, foolishness, and selfish motives of the heart. Out of the heart, the mouth speaks. All this month, I'm focusing on the words of Jesus. You know, the red letter ones. Some people like to only focus on those. Listen close to understand. That's a big mistake. Every word from Genesis to Revelation is God-breathed and inspired. Jesus is the Word made flesh, and He and the Father are one, so every word is the Word. Don't be foolish and misunderstand that very important truth. While the words we speak are powerful, the Word of God cuts deeper than any. Hebrews 4.12 for the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. The word of God is what we take to battle. We are to daily put on the armor of God. We read about in Ephesians 6. The sword of the spirit is the word of God. We speak the word of God and the Holy Spirit uses its truth to cut deep into the hearts of those who need to see their need for Jesus. Only the power of the Holy Spirit can convict and draw someone to repentance. That truth and power is what we take into battle. Jesus fought the devil with that sword. He used the word of God in the face of temptation three times while fasting for 40 days and nights in the desert. With each word, Satan was cut deep by truth and ultimately had to flee. Matthew 4, 4. Jesus answered, It is written, Man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Matthew 4, 7. Jesus answered him, it is also written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. Matthew 4, 10, Jesus said to him, away from me, Satan, for it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Jesus was slicing and dicing on the devil right there with the word of God. At a very weak moment physically from his fast, Satan attacked. He dropped temptation bombs left and right, and Jesus used countermeasures of scripture and took each one out like a ninja. Make no mistake, this was no easy battle, but Jesus was equipped with the word. He is the word, and in that battle, he knew no lie or temptation of the devil could stand against it. That's the truth. Look to the word of God and join us this month as we lean in and listen to understand the words Jesus spoke, the power they hold, and how God wants to use them in our own lives to penetrate our hearts and draw us closer to Him. I'm Lori Klein. Mm -hmm.